On this episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we actually have some jock content. Bro, do you even podcast? That's right. The jock breaks down the Ronda Rousey Amanda Nunes fight from UFC 207 for nerds like me. Then we go through the geek genre calendar of movies coming out this year. Talk about what we're most excited for and why, as well as new trailers, photos, and a look back at the 2016 box office. Plus an, a mailbag segment sharing listener feedback and a whole bunch more in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Sunday, January 8th, 2017. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. Jock and be heard it. Be funny. Disturb it. Jock and be heard it. Oh yeah, that's right, kid. What up, son? Why am I talking like this? I don't know. This is the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. And uh, that makes... Jock and Nerd! The ingredients to the show, and he is the rug boy. Good earth to you, rugs. What's up? What's up, dudes? How's it going? Uh, we missed you uh, last week. Nice to hear from you. How you been? Everything good? I've been good. I'm good. Right Are you up. good? Oh, everything's, everything is just fine and dandy, Jock and Nerdin'. Spoiler alertin', listener, if you're a first-time listener... Thanks for joining us. This is a show where we sit down every week and we geek out about stuff we love. And what we love is comic book stuff on the movies and on the TVs, on the comic book, and the surrounding culture regarding comic books. Uh, before we begin, I want you to know... Oh, before... <laughs> I'm all over the place. Uh, What's wrong this with is you? what we're going to do this show. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a long week. It's been a crazy week. Life throws crazy things at you and you fucking take it. And you do a podcast. That's what you do. Uh, you do? This is, is what we're going to do. That, that's exactly how you solve things. <laughs> you can see I'm very good at coping. These are my coping skills. Uh, for this show, listeners, this we're going to do. We're going to do uh, a little bit of jock talk, actually. Believe Whoa. it Believe it or not. Jock-tastic. Now, jock and nerd. Jock and nerd. 50% more jock in 2017. Uh, and well, Anthony's going to lead that off. We'll get to that. <laughs> and then after that, I thought we could take a look ahead at uh, geek stuff that's coming out, uh, specifically the movies and TV shows that we are looking forward to in 2017. We'll have a bunch of news bits sprinkled in there. And then we got some uh, mailbags, some listener feedback, emails, tweets to share with you and have a gay old time. But look, before we begin, I want you to check out our last couple of shows. We we ranked the superhero movies of 2016 with John Bellotti Jr., our buddy. That was a lot of fun. Uh, going through the year in uh, past year in Geek. And then the one before that is our Star Wars Rogue One review with uh, Joe from work. Who is that? Well, you're going to have to go listen to the show. But those are those are some fun shows. This will also be a fun show. It probably yeah. suck. <laughs> All right, fuck it. We got a <laughs> lot to get to. Let's get, let's begin. The Jock, Jock and Ned Podcast. Listener, if you want to send us some mail, you want to yell at us, you want to praise us, or you just want to send us random YouTube videos, just go to jogginerd.com slash contact. It has all the ways you can get in touch, our Twitter, our Facebook, even a fun uh, Facebook group where I get a lot of uh, scoops and news articles to put in the show notes. So yeah, join up on Facebook, dude. It's fun. It's the book. It's a, yeah, <laughs> except for the rug boy. You got to join up on the Twitter to interact with the rug boy. You can also send us voicemail and we will get to uh, have some more about that later. But first, Anthony, I'm going to throw it over to you by setting up this jock thing in a, in a nerd fashion. Just so anybody who's okay. like me, who's a nerd, doesn't really follow the UFC, I want your amazing analysis on this Amanda Nunes versus Ronda Rousey fight, UFC 207, because you're really good at breaking down these fights. But for the nerds that don't follow, the storyline is pretty cool. Because a little over a year ago, it was November 2015, 
uh, Ronda Rousey in one of the biggest UFC fights ever of her career, highest profile, the face of USC, suffers a huge loss to Holly Holm. And uh, 13 months go by, and that's all anybody can talk about. Uh, In the meantime, there's all these uh, news articles coming out that she's depressed, that uh, she's trying to start a movie career, and her movies have kind of dropped to the wayside, and projects have dropped out, and this fight comes up. Another big, huge, uh, high-profile fight for the UFC, which took place Saturday, December 30th, I believe, just before... Mm. The New Year. Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Friday, December 30th. Friday, December 30th. UFC 207. Yep. And, well, Anthony, I'm just going to let you take it from there. What do you got? Um, well, to equate this to a comic book like storyline, this is your classic hero gets defeated, except not really a hero, but kind of a hero to a lot of girls. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, dies and goes away for a long time and then finally has their reemergence in issue 100 almost like a bullshit. phoenix rebirth um, x-men thing yeah sort of yeah. thing yeah except uh you're not coming here for your ufc news but if you are she lost ronda rousey lost again um and she lost even more brutally than she did the previous outing and if you've listened to the jock and nerd podcast in previous episodes you would have known that i actually predicted she was going to lose did. this fight you did didn't you um yeah i did and she lost in 48 seconds. 48? And, uh, Jesus. Was shit. Completely. It was pretty embarrassing. She was completely demolished. She was demolished. And leading up to the fight, she wasn't doing any media, really. And she wasn't really, you know, at all in, in the public. She was doing really nothing to yeah. promote the fight, which is pretty unprecedented Radio in silence. MMA. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it, it, a lot of people took that as her kind of being a little, being a little whiny and a little, a little bit of a baby. And this didn't help. This loss didn't help. And she probably, I mean, if I had to say right now, I think she's probably going to retire. But there's been a lot of talk about her coach and how bad he is as a coach, which he's pretty awful. Um, yeah. And just her legacy. And I think this this whole this whole uh, storyline, it's still going to play out. But this was not a good look. This was not good for her. As far as why she lost, I mean, I can get super technical if I want to, but I'll just lay it, break it down like this. She's always had kind of terrible striking. She's been able to get away with it with her extreme athleticism and her ability to clinch, which is what she wants to do. She doesn't want to. She wants to take you down by grabbing your upper body and throwing you. She's a she's an Olympic gold, Olympic bronze medalist at judo. That's what they do. Um, but she doesn't have the footwork nor the head movement to actually properly engage someone that knows how to strike and defend what she's doing. And it seems like the game is kind of passing her by pretty quickly. I found a clip on YouTube of this fight because apparently it's a very hard to find a video of UFC anywhere, but I guess from their site. Is that right, Anthony? They got it locked down. Yeah, they don't they don't allow a lot of clips to get out there. Yeah, because I was like, this should be somewhere. So, of course, you know, dude, you could always just shoot your TV while the thing's on, put it on YouTube. Blah. I found that and I watched this 48 second fight. And man, you see Nunez. Hit Ronda right straight in the face, in the head, and you see her head jerk back, and you can almost see her fucking skull bounce around in there, and it looked like her head was moving independently of her body, and then she was all like a couple of those hits, and it was just done, and it was brutal. It's a little bit of the pussy in me coming out. I was like, this is hard to watch. It was fucking brutal. She hits hard, that one. Well, there's a lot of things going on in this fight, from what I could see. Is Number one is that Okay, Ronda's obviously rocked. Her confidence is not the same. All right, they're trying to her 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 coach and all these people are trying to make her into a striker, which which she's not. She's a wrestler. Clearly, you know, she's, she, she, she does not. judo. Yes. She does she does jujitsu. So she does judo and jujitsu and all the other Israeli uh, <laughs> kinds of a martial arts um, and falafel and um, yeah. Abule. So yeah, <laughs> and uh, anyway, so they're trying to get her to fight standing up. And that's not what she does. If you ever watch any of her other fights, she th- goes to the ground. She she hip tosses people like, uh, you know, and does that type of shit. So I don't know why they've changed her. I think I know why they did it, because everybody was starting to pick apart how Ronda Rousey works and she needed to change her game. But I think that this has made her just 10 times weaker as a fighter. I mean, from my untrained eye watching this, she didn't have a fucking chance from the beginning. Like, she, uh, and I guess... It, I was like, wow, like this, she was on the ropes the whole time. 
uh, 13 months, and this is how it goes down. That's crazy and must be so devastating. Anthony, what is she gonna? What's gonna happen? Where does she go from here now? Um. Well, I want to unpack a couple things. Yeah. She was, if you look at like any of the analysis, if there's like there's a lot of stills, yeah. of this fight and a lot of like people that are smarter than me that have broke down this fight. She was trying to take Amanda Nunes down. If you lo- watch some ah. of the punches where Amanda Nunes is throwing, uh, Rousey likes to slip in and grab her head. Yeah, and she's yeah. doing this multiple times, but. Amanda Nunes is so trained in terms of what a, a Ronda Rousey is going to do that she was prepared for every situation that was going to be in there. Granted, Ran, uh, Amanda Nunes probably rocked her within the first 15 seconds. Yeah. So once you're rocked like that, your game plan kind of falls apart a little bit. Yeah. The problem with Ronda Rousey is her coach is just awful. Uh, this guy, Edmund Tarverdian, is not a really recognized coach, and he's kind of a joke within the MMA community now. Wow. Um. And her, it's the fact that her footwork, she needs, she's not going to shoot on someone's leg. She's not really a wrestler. Right. She's a judo person. She could probably do it, but that's like a quick, that's like saying like you, Imran, you should paint in strictly fucking watercolors if you're not, but like you're an expert in some other form and, of art. Okay. Like, yeah. You could probably do it. Yeah. But it's, but it's not, not your, your it's not your forte. Right. Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to do that in a fight. So her whole gig is she needs to have really good footwork and really good head movement because she wants to rush you. She wants to get in really close. Ah. And inevitably you're going to get hit if you're going to, if you're going to play that style. Right. And her, her, her coach is just, if you watch any of her fights, her head work is her head movement is non-existent. So when you throw a punch, you're supposed to keep your head off the center line or else you're going to get countered because everyone yeah. knows where your head's going to be. Yes. You know, and, and but she never does that. She no. keeps her head straight up. Punches and straight to the her, face. Her footwork is really bad. I mean, if you want to l- cut someone off and kind of like put someone in a corner, you have to have good footwork. But she kind of just chases people. Ah, she's not really. There's not a lot of art to what she's doing. Yeah. Until until she grabs a hold of you, then she looks spectacular. And it's graceful. But if as, you have a if you have a great striker that's against her, you could really see her weakness come yeah, out. Yeah, you've had the last two fighters that are really good at striking and really trained, uh, like really good coaches that have trained them. Hey, you're going to avoid these positions against Ronda and you're going to win. Hmm. And even though like they both like knocked her out, like Holly Holm did it a little differently than Amanda Nunes. Holly Holm kind of was like a matador where she was letting the bull come to her and she, she would hit her, her and then yeah. run away, yeah. hit her, run away. Yeah. Amanda Nunes was just like, I'm a fucking bull as well. <laughs> and I'm just going to come right ahead, strike you, Jesus. push you off of yeah. me when you try to grab me and just keep hitting you until you fall over. Yeah. Um, as far as Ronda Rousey and what she's going to do next, I think she's going to retire. I, I really, I honestly, and I'm just playing armchair quarterback and, you know, speculating, but I really think her, her mental makeup is really fractured. I think, I think there's a lot that she needs to correct uh, personality wise. If she ever wants to continue in the sport, I think she could actually be still a, a good, really good fighter. Ah, but really, but, yeah, I mean, she's a high level athlete. She's a, she's 29 and she was in the Olympics. She's an Olympian. And, yeah. You know, she's an, yeah. she's in her athletic prime yeah. right now. She should be a lot better at the other par- facets of the the MMA game than she is, what, but she isn't. What is the lesson she should learn from all this then? Uh, the lesson she should learn is that she has a bad coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has a really bad coach and that loyalty, and I think she's with this coach because of some sort of loyal uh, loyalty aspect. Yeah, why would she but, keep him twi- after the first one? Yeah, and this coach, her mom has criticized this coach. Like, it's it's really bad. So the, the loyalty thing, you can be loyal to a point, but if you want to progress in your career... You have to find people that are actually willing to to break you down and get you a little, get you to be better. I I remember a lot, like the last time, the last fight. You also said it was the coach's fault. Like you would, you know, clearly be like, "Look, it's the coach. He's not doing the right job." So, but listen, I don't want to throw it all on the yeah, coach just yeah. because at the end of the day, it's well, the fighter in the cage. It's it's a perfect storm of a lot of things. It's the bad coaching, the fact that the the level of athlete that she's facing has now risen because. Yes. She's changed the game. I mean, you had Carano, which was a big, uh, you know, draw. And then Rousey was the next big thing. You know, Misha Tate was also big. So all these new girls are coming into the sport and they're like really athletic. They're really, uh, uh, you know, super athletes. And they've, they've, they've looked at Rhonda and they've picked her apart. Their teams have picked her apart. Everything that she does, they know all of her weaknesses. So it was just a matter of time before she's going to get dismantled every time now. You know, that's actually a really good point, yeah. too, is women's MMA is, is really, really young. Yeah, really young, in, especially in comparison to MM, uh, men's MMA. 
Um, and Rhonda's rise, she's elevated the game for sure. So I want to give her credit. All these girls are a lot better athletes because of Ronda yes, Rousey. Yes. But Ronda Rousey is almost like like UFC one yeah. in terms of like old school. These old school fighters that like one person knew how to do something really, really good, which was Hoist Gracie and Jiu Jitsu. And then he kind of like elevated the game and everyone was like, Oh, okay, well let's defend this and let's be good at multiple things. Like Rhonda is really good at just one thing. Right. Which is her judo. But she's not good at everything. And these other fighters are coming in Way are more, a lot yeah, more well rounded. Diverse. I mean, I guess yeah. the irony is it's the because of her, these fighters are coming in because as she opened the doors for women wrestling and kicking her ass. What yeah. what do you think? What is her legacy to the sport? Her legacy? I mean, at the end of the day, she's still going to be like a pioneer. She's still, you know, the person that made women's MMA famous. I mean, we before Ronda Rousey, you know, Gina Carano was famous, but no one was really talking about right. women's MMA right. until Ronda Rousey. She wasn't in out. the USC. She was in right. Strike Force. Right, right. But she she's, also wasn't as as good. And she's in Deadpool. That's the girl from Deadpool, right? And she's in Deadpool, yeah. But the, the legacy is she's still going to be great. Um, but this definitely kind of tarnishes the the back end of it for sure. It and, does. That's and, and, it, and I think the fact that her attitude has been kind of yeah. iffy, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. I mean, you know, she before she lost to Holly Holm, she was talking about um, these girls aren't as good. Like, they'll never be as good as me. Yeah. Like she was kind of borderline cocky, yeah. which I understand you have to have that mindset. But all those things got thrown in her face. And <laughs> when it gets thrown in your face and then you react as poorly as she has to it. I think that compounds things. It's a lot like the Mike Tyson story. Yeah, yeah, a That's little bit. I, yeah, she, I, a little bit. I would say though, Mike Tyson, it's it's similar in that once the mystique is gone, you know, then then and you're able to be beat. It's not as you lose that aura. And Mike Tyson, when he got beat, he lost that aura of invincibility. Same thing with Ronda Rousey. The only thing is Ronda Rousey, Mike Tyson's had a questionable uh, personal life, and Ronda Rousey, as far as we know, is, has been pretty spotless outside of the cage. Yeah, from yeah. what I read, like she just made women's fighting huge and and brought a lot of money to the UFC. But you know, oh, she has. Yeah, I mean this this fight drew over a million pay per view buys, wow. which is which is huge money for the UFC. Was it bigger? But, was it bigger than UFC? The, never officially had women until Rousey right, right. broke that right. mold. Yeah, she broke that, the mold. That is huge, and now they're breaking her face. In, in the, I mean, like you know, years from now she'll be remembered as a legend. Yeah, for sure. She's gonna. She's always gonna be remembered as a legend, but. It's not ending the way she she probably would. The back liked. half of it a little bit tarnished. Uh, that I mean, at least it doesn't ruin her complete legacy because it's pretty incredible. Uh, I was looking for some other numbers. Like, do you know if this was bigger than the Holly Holm fight in terms of pay per view? It was about the same. It was about the same. And if you throw in the fact, it could have been bigger if a Ronda Rousey would have done any sort of media for this fight. Yeah, she didn't talk to B, anybody. This game, this fight was actually on a Friday night, and UFCs are usually traditionally on Saturday nights, ah, so that's a different night for them. Okay. Also, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve weekend. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, there's a lot of yeah, stuff yeah, going against yeah. it, and it still had just as many pay per view guys. Uh, what I found interesting in terms of numbers was the purse for the fight meeting. What each fighter made, and you know, this all but probably ends like Anthony said, Ronda Rousey's career. She uh, was slated for a flat payday. Of three billion dollars. Oh shit! Meanwhile, Nunes is slated for a hundred thousand dollar purse with a win bonus, but even that win bonus is not a lot. So, Rousey, it was a hundred thousand dollar win. Oh, bonus. another hundred thousand. I'll, I'll throw in two. They each both of the, the champion, and I'm pretty sure Ronda Rousey both gets a percentage of every pay per view. So, oh snap! Every pay per view that's sold, I think they get like three to five bucks or something like that. So they're, they're walking away. Ronda Rousey easily probably walked away with close to 10. Million. Ronda Rousey, $3 million for 48 and seconds. Nunes probably walked away with, with close to a million or so. Damn. But if you do, so just on the flat 3 million for the 48 seconds, the math is she made $62,500 per second oh, uh, during that fight, which is fucking nuts. But I guess that's part of matchmaking, right? It's part of like, how much will it take for you to get into this fight with you based on what's at stake and who's the, a lot of thing? it, a lot of it is, you know, how much exposure can you bring? And, and Ronda Rousey was clearly She's worth the, the three the main attraction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't really, these comebacks don't really go well. A lot of the time. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, look at tiger woods. Yeah, I mean, he's that's true. He, once he lost his mojo, that's it. Yeah. 
You know, he's yeah. never going to have the same success that he had. Same thing with Ronda. I think that she lost her mojo. So and- is there anybody that that has her charisma? Like, you know, she was kind of she she looked good. She could talk. She was well spoken. Uh, is there anyone who could step in and be the next Ronda Rousey? Um, well, I mean, Amanda Nunes is the first ever uh, openly uh, openly homosexual champion. Oh, OK. In UFC history. Oh, that's good. Um they just had a fight on UFC Fox, which is uh, one of the big channels here in America. And uh, it was like Paige Van Zant, who's on been with Dancing with Stars and Michelle Waterson. They drew an awesome rating. So I don't know if there's an, a next girl just yet. Yeah. But it'll be fine until until they that next. There's always going to be someone else. Yeah. There's always going to be someone that's going to come. They need along. a face. No one's on the radar. Yeah. Now. OK. Really like well, they had impressive. one person, Paige Van Zant, who was on Dancing with the Stars. OK. But, um, and she's very attractive. Uh, she's only like 22 or 23. But. Every the last two high profile fights they've put her in, she's lost. So, and the last one on Fox, she actually got like choked unconscious. Oh my god! (laughs) Yeah, so like they're they're fine. They're looking for someone, someone who will rise uh, through the fucking shit. And uh, but uh, she's also very lightweight too. Yeah, she she's a lighter person. I mean, the the thing about women's MMA, and it it sucks to say this, but still the truth is, you kind of still got to be a very attractive female. Yeah, no, it's a it's a horrible double standard. (laughs) The only ones that have gotten pushed are like Ronda, Gina, yeah. Amisha Tate is considered pretty attractive. Paige Van Zant, you know, there's someone named Cyborg Santos who actually got popped for stories, but she's a fucking killer. But she, she kind of looks like a man. Looks so like, like a dude, that's what I heard. Yeah, about that. so like, like they don't push the her like that. Yeah, you know? so it's rough. She's it's aging rough out though. Cyborg's aging out though. Yeah, and she just got suspended. She's gonna about to be suspended for a year for popping for uh, uh, performance enhancing oh, drugs. So that's not yeah, good. the old PEDs. Dude, uh, well, man, wow, what a what a career! You kind of saw the uh, the fall of a a great fighter right here. So I, I read and like if you look at like back at the Holly Holm fight, just real quick, the and it, a lot of analysis backs this up, but you can literally see her, her career just fall apart in that one fight. Like her confidence, the way she reacted to getting hit and then being knocked out, like it literally was right in front of your eyes. That fight probably lasted like eight minutes. You saw eight minutes of someone that was uber confident to someone that literally was just destroyed by the end of it. And that's just like an, uh, an analogy for just how her career is gone. She's just got to move her head more. That's all. Don't put your head in the same spot when she's punching you in the face. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's got some things she needs to work But, on. man, wait, wait, who's the champ now? Amanda Nunes. Nunes. I mean, that's the thing. Amanda Nunes was the champion going into this. Oh, fight, she no one t- knew that oh, shit. because yeah. all the marketing beat, yeah. was about Ronda Rousey. She beat Holly Holm and she she beat. No, she, she beat uh, Misha Tate. Misha Tate beat Holly Holm. Then Misha okay. Tate fought Amanda Nunes and lost. So, just, so actually, Amanda Nunes has beaten the, the probably top two. two out of the top three most marketable fighters in women's and, MMA. And, and Tate, somebody that that Ronda beat. Right. Yeah. Fared better against uh, Nunez. Yes, wow, yes, she did. Wow, she did. I mean, she still got beat in the first round, and the end was pretty similar to the, the Ronda fight. But Misha Tate definitely fared better. She definitely had a, a bit better game plan. Man, huh. Nunez, Nunez is a beast. Then and, and, Me, and Misha Tate's not going anywhere. She's not gonna. Her losses don't rock her like like it does Ronda. Well, she did fight again in uh, they had a card in Madison Square Garden, and actually, so this is kind of the the tricky part for the UFC is she lost again, and then she retired immediately after. Uh, right now, they oh, have really? nobody. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. Have, I mean, they have Amanda Nunez, who's you know uh, the champ and to destroy the last two, but no one that they want to push yet. Oh, she officially retired. Yeah, I didn't know that. She retired. I'm surprised Ronda hasn't officially retired yet either. Yeah, I think she's gonna. She's the type that they think is going to disappear for a little bit, and we'll, we'll see. But I, I, if I had to pick, if yeah, I had to guess, I think she's going to retire. She's not coming back. What about, uh, you know, you go over to WWE, you have some fun. It's kind of like acting, might. it's fighting, it's both the things. Less painful. She could. The thing that sucks, though, about, or the thing that sucks for her is her whole appeal, like in going into movies and going into the WWE, yeah. is that she was this uns- the, the baddest fucking woman on the planet. And that aura is now gone. Not anymore. She, really, yeah. she can't act. No. She's like, if you saw her in Fast and Fierce, she's no. terrible. Oh, yeah. They canceled. The, like, they were going to do a Roadhouse remake with her. Yep. They canceled that. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, that's her whole appeal. So, if she wants to make money, that was her whole thing, is being the fucking baddest woman in the planet that happens to be attracted to some. Attracted Talk, to some if people. she had, like, a good enough, like, sense of self-deprecation, like, she could really make a great character in the WWE as, like, this washed-up fuck, fucking mad 
you know, fight her and, and run a storyline like that. But I think she's a little too fragile uh, emotionally to have fun with it. And she might have just made a ton of money and yeah, is good like I'm out. Set. I made my three yeah. mil. I'm out. See ya. Well, you're not counting all the right. Well, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Good stuff. So yeah, could be possibly the last we see of the Rousey in the octagon. Yeah, crazy. Well done, Anthony. Yes, no, your analysis is always good, dude. I've heard it from other people too. They're like, he's I really, like your anal. His anal cysts. Anal cysts. It's, that, that's pretty good, too. It's also very good. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to some geek shit. I'm bored with this fighting. Uh, let's talk about dudes in spandex. Uh, let's start. <laughs> let's start about. We're going to go through the movie calendar for 2017. Uh, running down the movies that uh, we are most excited for. Actually, it's the movies that I'm just most excited for because I made the fucking notes by myself. So. Uh, yeah. St- <laughs> I actually have no idea what we're going to talk about. Uh, don't worry. Follow me here, guys. It's not hard. We're going to start in March 3rd. Logan comes out. Hugh Jackman's uh, possibly his final movie as Wolverine, his ninth movie uh, as the character, uh, directed by James Mangold. Uh, you got, uh, you know, uh, this X-23. There's a little girl, amazing trailer with Johnny Cash music. Uh, of course, Patrick Stewart is also in this, Charles Xavier. Um, uh, how excited are you guys for this movie? I uh, I like the the Wolverine I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, there were some parts of it that were a little confusing and ham fisted, but I do like Mangold. Mangold is good. He uh, he did uh, he did the, he did the Wolverine also, right? So they've they yes. worked together. They've been on this journey together. Uh, Anthony, how excited are you? Are you looking forward to this? I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be good. I enjoyed the Wolverine. Um, I'm not like overly excited because at this point, this is the what, ninth time maybe we're gonna yeah. see. Yeah. Wolverine nine or tenth, so I it's at this point it's getting a little old for me, but I am liking the direction I saw. In the, However, in the this is the first R-rated Wolverine we're we've ever got, so yeah, that to me puts this uh, above all the others and makes it a beast of its own. Uh, Wolverine suffered similar something that happened to Rogue One uh, it, before it was coming out, and which is it lost its composer, <laughs> Cliff Martinez dropped out uh, uh, scoring the Wolverine sequel. Revealing that Marco Beltrami is ha- handling the composer duties uh, m- with, m- you know, just he only got months to work on it. But what I thought was cool about Logan being R-rated is uh, James Mangold talked about who the audience is for this movie. And this is why I really Geek uh, I'm excited for this movie. He says Logan is an attempt to bring an end to Hugh's amazing line of performances as Wolverine. And the ambition of doing that is to try and make an adult film about Wolverine to make a movie for grownups. We're not trying to make a movie that satisfies everyone. We're trying to make a movie that stands out and is different because it's kind of a grown up drama that also features intense action. I love that they're not fucking placating to the, the, the cash grab of this or, you know, trying to keep it PG 13 to get the money. He's like, this is the fact that he goes, this Wolverine already the movies for adults is fucking awesome. Yeah. I think the, the major fans of Wolverine are people who discovered him in early 2000. And those people are aged 17 years since they first saw Wolverine. Right. So, like, this so, movie, they grew up with Wolverine and now has a grown-up movie for you. Uh, but, you know, if you've read... I mean, R-rated is even more... It's pushing it farther than what they could do in the comic books, which is very interesting to see. You know, you don't see them swearing and extreme violence in, in a lot of right. Wolverine. So, I mean, there's violence in Wolverine. The, the, the comic books don't do shit about, like, hacking up somebody in a bit. That's true. But... They just don't use the curse words. Right. And for that, for some reason, you can fucking slice somebody in half. No problem. Say shit. Uh, no, that's not, the, you can't, you can't refer it, to it's excrement. It's just a word. Love them curse words. All right. So then later that month, also in March, March 10th, we get Kong Skull Island. The uh, first part of the shared universe uh, that Godzilla 2014 started. Gareth Edwards, Godzilla. This one directed by Jordan Voight Roberts. Uh, with you got your Sam Jackson, Brie Larson, Toby Kebbell, Tom Hiddleston, John Goodman, John C. Riley, bunch of other fuckers. A uh, 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 great trailer, Anthony. I know you are excited for this one coming March. Yes, yeah, this one I'm pretty pumped up about. I'm 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 just excited for the uh, American version of a kaiju shared universe. Yes, yes, it's important. And I think Rugs, don't you think they're headed in the right direction so far with the trailers they've given us, which I've loved. So- what I've seen is pretty cool. Like I just, I hope that it's entertaining and 
that uh, Kong gets some screen time. And uh, it's not the exact same Kong movie we've seen a thousand times. I don't think it will be. I think that they're trying to reestablish, uh, you know, Kong in a different way. Uh, kind of like what Shin Gojira did for Godzilla. It's They've rebooted it. I think they're going to reboot Kong and give him a little bit more options because he dies in every movie. Yeah, this is not your Peter Jackson King Kong. And uh, he's yeah. a lot bigger than that King Kong. He's a lot bigger. Yeah, which he, I mean, he's he's about the size. They're trying to make him Godzilla size. So, yeah, he's way. You know, bigger. and they're smart because like from what I'm listening to you guys talk about Godzilla movies. The one I I, it, I noticed that it's always better when there's more when there's a lot of other monsters in the movie. And this movie seems to have a bunch of monsters in it for Kong, when it's just Kong or just Godzilla. You know, I agree. Sometimes it's hard to get to make a whole the, solid story. Godzilla and King Kong are, are so iconic at this point yeah. that you, you almost want to secretly root for them. Yeah. So when there's other monsters, you get that gives you the chance to do that. You need something for them to bounce off of. So as you see in the trailer, there's like fucking crazy soul eaters or some other monsters. And oh, looks. Awesome. Yeah. What did he call them? Uh, skull, 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 crushers? skull crawlers, skull fuckers, <laughs> skull crawlers. Oh, that's that other subreddit I joined, the Skull Fuckers. Uh, yeah, Skull. That was my middle name in high school. <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> oh, middle yeah. in high school. Yeah, you I fucked up, up the joke that works for everything, by the way. Yeah. Uh, that was my nickname in high school. All right, go, <laughs> moving forward to the end of March, uh, a movie that I'm slightly kind of interested in, Ghost in the Shell, only because of all the controversy of the casting of Scarlett Johansson. You know, it is an, uh, it's the, uh, it's an adaptation of the anime, and it just looks like an awesome movie to watch. After smoking a huge spliff, you know what I mean? Uh, starring Scarlett Johansson and uh, Julia Binoche, a bunch of other people. Uh, the trailer is trippy. The visuals look amazing. Are you guys uh, looking forward to this at all? Well, whitewashing aside, I think that it's interesting. Yeah, I like the trailer. I like that it was actually kind of pulling from the bits of Ghost in the Shell, the movie. Yeah. And using a Depeche Mode song in there that was from the 90s, you know, as well when, you know, when Ghost in the Shell came into, you know, importance. So, it, you know, I feel like that um, they're trying to get the essence now. Rupert, whatever. Rupert Sanders is the director. Yeah, he directed the Snow White and the Huntsman movie, which was Ew. a surprisingly OK movie, considering it's about. Snow White and Kristen Stewart Ugh. and shit, you know, and I hate those people yeah. and and whatever. And I was it made it somewhat watchable, but um, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of tepid on it. I'm like, I see some things I really like, and I hope it's a good movie. I don't think they can really pull off what they do in the anime, though. There's just parts of it are it, framed by frame like uh, straight adaptation. Rugs, is this? Am I wrong? Is this kind of like the first big? Uh, anime to be adapted into a movie like i remember i always wanted akira to be made into a movie and i don't know if there was rumors but is this like the f they've been trying to make akira for years, for years right but is there anything yeah. else uh probably there is i don't know i feel like this is the they tried to make i mean dragon ball they tried to do dragon ball z this one's really mainstream though you got finally got a, you know a scarlett johansson yeah because this is the biggest uh anime translation they tried to do air, the, the last airbender this could oh yeah they did that avatar they tried to do yeah. fist of the north star well, and that was the worst was movie horrible. i've ever seen but this could get people turned on to the ghost in the shell anime and turn them on to uh more japanese anime anthony do you, are you into the anime at all would i mean i'm not into anime but i remember seeing the trailer and thinking this this does look cool so my excitement level is pretty low but the trailer didn't turn me away. So she's practically naked in the fucking thing. She just got like one white thing. Well, on. in Ghost in the Shell, she's actually yeah. Naked, there's more nipples in Ghost in the Shell, so they they, yeah. they didn't go that far. Which would have been well. Nice. This is the thing. Like Ghost in the Shell is is pretty much like forty percent of the Matrix. The movie The Matrix is all ripped off of Ghost in the ah, Shell, the anime. Okay. And, uh, you know, a lot of the ideas for The Matrix ripped off of Ghost in the Shell. Because Ghost in the Shell, if you don't know what it's about, it's about this uh, cyborg that's a woman. And they, and sh they send her on all these missions that ha have to do with, um, you know, the cybernet cybernetic shit and hacking and, uh, and all that She's other stuff. She's not an MMA fighter? Hmm. No. <laughs> she should be also. <laughs> so she's kind of like a kind of like a, she's a cyborg cop. Not a cop. Not a cop. She's kind of like a, like on, on the she's working in, in, in like a in like a 
clandestine organization. Well, they put out the first two minutes of the movie, and like it's where you see her being put together. It was pretty fucking cool. Like it was exactly yeah. like the beginning of the anime. All right, let's move on to May, a movie that uh, I think everyone is more excited for, yeah, which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two coming out May fifth. James Gun- James Gunn's second uh, Guardians movie. Uh, the same cast, but now we're adding Sylvester Stallone, who still doesn't have a credit on this. It's very mysterious. And Kurt Russell as Ego, the living planet slash Peter Quill's father. Uh, I don't know if that's a spoiler, spoiler alert. But uh, you also have Nathan Fillion joining him this time as Simon Williams, who's Wonder Man. So I remember like a year ago, we talked about uh, the set pictures of they were doing like a Wonder Man movie retrospective and. There was a movie poster of Wonder Man playing Tony Stark in a Tony Stark biopic within universe of the MCU, which I thought was fucking great. Level of excitement, Anthony, for Guardians of the Galaxy, way higher than Ghost in the Shell, I imagine. Yeah, it is higher than Ghost in the Shell of the three Marvel movies, Marvel Studios produced movies that are coming out this uh, this year. Yes, this is actually my least excited. Oh, this is number three. Okay, but but I'm also I'll say that this out of the three is the one that I know I am almost. 100% 100% sure will be good. Will be actually pretty good. I mean, I think that's the beauty of this. Like, this is in safe hands. Yes. Like, this is almost like I know what we're getting. It's here. in safe, right. But and but you don't know also. Like, it's the, the beauty of this franchise that James Gunn is like, you kind of like, you don't know what you're getting, but you know, and then you are always, you're going to be like, just completely awesomely surprised, probably. And it's going to be. You're going you're gonna to laugh and you're going to get characters that you've already had a great time with and you're going to add on to that. Yeah. And you know that the movie, it. At the very least, it's going to really entertain you. It's kind of weird with uh, Marvel movies because, um, for example, with sequels, you can't really bet on the second one being good. We had the Thor, the Dark World, which sucked balls. And we've had other things. That went, but those are director changes. They went to a different director. And then Captain America, the, the second movie, was actually better because yep. they changed directors. Yep. Now, when you have the same director doing the same movie twice... I don't know if that if that always works out. Whedon did did Avengers one and Avengers two. Oh, that's two a was good so point. Uh, I so see what you're we getting. We don't at. know. I, even though we had a lot of confidence in that fucking Age of Ultron shit, and uh, so I don't want to have false confidence in this. I feel like it's going to be good, uh, and it, and I'm not going to be as mad because I don't give a shit about Guardians of the Galaxy yes. as much as I do other things. So. Um, I might not be as let down. I might not be expecting as much as I would from like Avengers or something like that. Yes. So I think I'm pretty safe, but you just always got to keep that thought in mind that we didn't crash and burn on the second Avengers. So I don't know. We'll see. I think that's part of why it works is that we don't really you're like nobody really knows these characters, but what we met of them in the first movie was so endearing. I feel like James Gunn's got a deep well of shit that he wants to put in there and he's still got enough. Uh, and it's it's been well thought out in this whole ego being his dad, being a planet. Um, I, again, like you said, I think it's a good hits. But, I, you know, I didn't think about that second time, same director. But look at Spider-Man 2. Uh, that's, I think, the, the best out of the three movies, Sam Raimi's. Yeah, true. You got that. I mean, you've also got James Cameron's Terminator 2. Yeah, and the Aliens. There's, 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 yeah. It works the other way. Well, Aliens. Well, that was, was Scott. Yeah, really. Scott. Or, or The Dark Knight. Yeah. You yeah. Say yeah. So there, there, it works either way. I just, I'm just i very comfortable with James Gunn with, with these guys. It's going to be a fun, fun ride. Now, yeah. also in May, uh, a movie that we haven't really discussed, but we are very excited for because, like we just mentioned, uh, James Cameron's Aliens. It's Alien Covenant. The prequel, but sequel to Prometheus, uh, from Ridley Scott himself, coming out. To talk about this May nineteenth. They just put out a trailer, a red band trailer. Uh, oh, there was a red band trailer. No, the trailer you saw was a red band trailer. I don't know if because it was. Uh, oh, it was a red band trailer. Yeah, so that's like an R rated trailer. And uh, Anthony, I know you want to talk about this. I'm basically going to say this trailer reminds me of like the original alien movie. Like this is a horror movie. uh, And uh, you see our classic aliens finally at the end in this storyline. I got to watch this now. Well, click the link while Anthony, tell me what, what you liked about this trailer, what it uh, said to you. So summer, sort of like Godzilla. I am a low key alien predator guy. Yeah. I really like these kind of movies. Yeah. 
Um, I've read like the books and shit too. I read some of the comic. <laughs> I read the comic books. Yeah, uh, yeah. the crossover like, I'm comic low books. Key, I own like Alien vs. Predator, even though they're both both movies are awful. <laughs> I own them both. Wow. So there's there's that. Um, here, let's let Rugboy watch it first because I can hear it in the background. Kaka nerd. Well, Rugs right. trailer reaction. It was pretty cool. I mean, uh, it does look like it's actually a good movie. Right. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it's like Alien, like, okay, the first Alien is a classic. Yeah. The second Alien is done by James Cameron, and that's also a fucking Absolutely. classic. It's a great action yeah. movie, and the queen at the end is fucking balls to the wall awesome. And then you got a bunch of shitty uh, ones. Yeah, pretty that, much that are kind of confusing and resetting and yeah. the timeline, and I don't know what they're doing. And Then they had that one with fucking Winona Ryder that was just like a mess. But That was with The Rock, cool. right? Charles S. Dutton, Rock, R-O-C. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Alien. I think then, Resurrection. Uh, yeah, and then you had uh, what's his name, David Fincher's one, Alien Three, which got hacked up. Then yeah. do you count the AVP one and two, Aliens versus Predators, in that? Most fans, was, most fans don't. Yeah, I, I kind of do. I, I kind of like those. Those were fun. They're bad. They're bad, <laughs> They're bad fun. They're bad movies. They're, they're, the only thing that's cool, cool about them is seeing the two uh, monsters on screen together. And then you yeah. had Prometheus, which the problem for me was I don't remember that movie at all. I don't understand what was going on. Like, it was supposed to be a prequel, but there's no, where's the fucking aliens? Well, that's just the way that they found that's where the aliens come from. That's where they that's where the origination of the of the uh, mutation started, where it, they started infecting with the face huggers and these people. And in, how it spreads across the planet in, in the universe and shit. The problem with Prometheus, I liked Prometheus, by the way, when I saw it in theaters. But I remember I've, I've been trying to put my finger on what the problem was with Pre- Prometheus. And I think I figured out what it is, is the fact that they raise all these questions like, who are our makers? And why did they do this? And why are they creating these weapons? And why do they want to kill us? Ah, so yeah. Literally, all of those questions, none of them are answered by the end of the movie. So the movie at the end, you just sort of like, what was what? the what was the point of what's this? The point, right? Yeah, you're just like, what's the point? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a long, it's almost like a long prequel. It's a long ad for the next movie, but right. you have to deliver something in this movie for me to continue. And I was waiting, and then I'm like, I wanted this movie where you see the face huggers and you have that shower sex scene, and you get a glimpse of the, the H.R. Geiger alien. Uh, the synopsis being. Uh, uh, a new chapter, the crew of the colony ship Covenant bound for a remote planet on the far side of the galaxy discovers what they think is an uncharted paradise, but it is actually a dark, dangerous world. When they uncover a threat beyond their imagination, they must attempt a harrowing escape. And Fastbender is playing two dudes. He's playing the android David from Prometheus and another character named Walter. That's another android. It's a, oh, it's a separate android who is different. So... This should be interesting seeing two fastbenders and also uh, the James Franco's in this. You know that he is. I didn't know He's that. James Franco is in this somewhere like how uh, Guy Pierce was in the last one. Oh, Guy Pierce really is in the, okay. Guy Pierce was yeah, in he's in this one too. And Billy Crudup, uh, Danny McBride. Wow, Danny, Danny McBride. That's was he? Were they all in Prometheus? No, this is a whole new cast. That's all, this that's, is this well, is this Numi Rapis and uh, and uh, Michael Fassbender are the two. Ah, uh, Numi. What a great name, Numi Rapis as Elizabeth Shaw. Right, because so, she... so before Rugs went and watched the trailer, yeah, I, w- I was gonna go and say what I thought about this. Okay, um, as a closet Alien Predator fan, um, I'm a, I'm excited for this one. I was excited for Prometheus though too, so uh, that kind of let me down. I've read some stuff. Some of the some people have been screened the first forty minutes. Oh, you're right. And I've read it, and I, from what I've read, this movie is fucking brutal. Oh wow, brutal fucking movie. Not for the squeamish. I think I've read of a couple scenes that will take the the iconic uh, chestburster scene and just fucking blow that shit out of the water. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, apparently these and hit the spoiler button. Oh, uh, okay. Here we go. Spoiler alert. So apparently these aliens are they're not they're so in the comics and everything they're called xenomorphs, right? Um, and I think they're calling these aliens. Neomorphs or protomorphs? Okay, because these are different. It's a different strain of alien. It's not the. Yeah, it's you're going to see some of the iconic ones, but you're also going to see some earlier evolution, earlier adaptations of these aliens. Well, in the trailer, in that one shot, it seems to be coming out of the dude's back, like through his there's, spine. Apparently, there's there's these. They come out of the spine. Ugh. There's also one that will come out of someone's throat. Oh shit! That's terrifying. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, if you remember, if I don't know if you how uh, in depth you guys know have knowledge on Alien, but uh, the Alien itself was created by H.R. Geiger, right? Correct. And was very phallic. Yeah, long and, and, and shiny. A lot of an, and then a lot of analogies for rape. For the ah, yeah. So, ah. like in the original Alien, there's one scene where one of the aliens uh, kills someone. You just see the tail crawling up, similar to that shower scene. Yeah, scene. yeah. And it's supposed to imply that the alien is like sticking that up someone's wow. Vagina. Well, then they went, they went and actually did that with species. The movie, yes, yeah. where she had to fuck the guy to like uh, reproduce with. Well, the, it's the whole thing is, I mean, they reproduce by literally fucking forcing. Your mouth. Yeah, they force yeah. their egg in you, and then they burst out of you. It's unwanted pregnancy. Yeah, uh, but at least and like there's new strands of ways you can infect it too. So you saw in the trailer. It went into someone's ear. Oh, yeah. There was like a little thing floating. Yeah. Yeah. And in Prometheus, you saw David, uh, Michael Fassbender's character, playing with it and putting it in someone's drink. I thought Michael Fassbender's character was the most interesting part of that. Oh, yeah, movie. for sure. So I'm glad he's back. For sure. Yeah. No, it looks, it's got a great, scary alien horror feel. Like, I'm, uh, I'm excited for this more than the Prometheus. Uh, really, Scott can be pretty hit or miss. But yeah, he, it's uh, surprising. He's such on he's such a good director. Like when he's on, holy shit, he makes an instant classic. If he phones it in, yeah. if yeah. that's what it's it so sucks. surprising. But when he likes something yes. and he really wants to do a good job, yeah. then he's he's awesome. And he's on. He's fucking on. All right, that's. Uh, I think he, for Prometheus, he tried to do too much. Yeah, he had real grand ideas. Yeah. and just didn't have enough time to do it. But I think. He's getting closer to what everyone wanted, which is a real prequel. It's like, he, like you said, he kind of had to set up this movie, which maybe this is the one he really wanted to do, but he felt he needed to set it up, I guess, to lead you here. I don't know. Yeah. That's May 19th, 2017. After these messages, we'll be right back. Forgive the interruption, but I believe this requires your attention. If you ever believed Captain America was on the U.S. Olympic soccer team. If you ever thought that the Winter Soldier was that brace yourselves guy on the internet. And if you ever wondered just what would a raccoon do with a machine gun. Then don't let another week pass you by without tuning into Mighty Marvel Geeks. Mighty Marvel Geeks is your show about all things Marvel. With news, rumors, commentary, and interviews. As well as our weekly recommendations on what to pick up on New Comic Book Day. Official consulting hours are between 8 and 5 every other Thursday. That's Mighty Marvel Geeks on WeebyGeeks.net, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, JT. Go to Jacob. Whiskey TK. Hey, Jack and Nerds, this is Insert Coin to Continue. So you've already fucked. All right, all right. Everyone needs to know that that's, that's two weak fucking air horns. Oh. I disagree. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> what cake? Putting this in. For the Jerk Olympics. <laughs> Just go with that for a foot. I think that's rolling. Please check us out at insertcointocontinue.ca and on Twitter at credit number two continue. Bye. Peace. Trivia Geeks, the unpredictable game show podcast is back with a brand new season. They've got a new host, new games, and a new day in time. But that's not all. Now you can download their companion app, Triv Now, and play along in real time. Watch Carrie on YouTube as she tries to convince her partner that his dark night hasn't risen in years. Listen on Diamond Club and Alpha Geek Radio, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can also follow the show on Facebook and Twitter and get all the latest updates and showtimes. Hey, what's up? It's Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Uh, and then the next uh, exciting movie, uh, for me anyways, June 2nd, The Wonder Woman comes out. Uh, DC, Warner Brothers, what is it, their fourth uh, movie? Uh, and they're the whatever universe. they're trying to... Yep. But this one directed by Patty Jenkins... Uh, starring Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Robin Wright, Connie Nielsen, a uh, bunch of other people. Now, this is the moment where DC can say to m the MCU that we broke through a lead female superhero before you guys did, regardless of how the movie is. And I think the movie's going to be very good from the trailers we've seen. It's not Zack Snyder directing. And Jeff Johns has screenplay credit on this with Alan Heinberg which also gives me hope. Uh, excitement level for the Wonder Woman, guys. This movie really has to perform a little bit uh, better than Suicide Squad, I think. 
it's weird because you're trying to bet on it to be good right. because it needs Indeed. to be good. All, but all of their movies from here on out have that same requirement, unfortunately. And there, but there's a stench of DC yes. that just always fucks it up and, and fumbles the ball right when they're crossing into the fucking end yep. zone. So um, hopefully it's good. I am optimistic that it's going to be good. So l- let's see what happens. I'm in complete agreement with Rugboy. Optimist. The trailers we've seen, yeah, good shit. Yeah, I, I like Gal Gadot so far, um, but I can't, I can't escape that fucking stench, dude. The How stench these, is these, always these, rife with these. But look, just the, the yeah. hot garbage that yes. they've been producing. Because trailers, you know, will always give you the best of the movie. You know, the formula for what they're doing right, they put it in World War One. I. I love that idea. It's different. Nobody deals with that war. The the the, the color palette. Seems to be great between the mascara, bright, and uh, man's world, kind of monochrome and muddy. And the costume looks great. She looks great in the costume. The action scenes we've seen in the trailers are great. But who knows? It could still be a hot mess. But uh, it's not Zack Snyder. So it's there. it gets a couple of points for it uh, for Patty Jenkins. Uh, and let's see. Let's see. Uh, June second, twenty seventeen. Like like Rug Boy said, it fucking needs to be good, dude. Yes, they really really need it to really- hit something. It needs to be good. How good does it need to be? It doesn't have to be as good as, let's say, you know, Civil War or even no. uh, Captain America 2, uh, Winter Soldier. It doesn't have to be that good. It has to be like, you know, somewhere near like Iron Man good. Yes. Yeah, that's what I – exactly. That's what I was thinking. It needs to be like an Iron Man good for this to be thing to be stable at this point. When I saw Iron Man, I wasn't bowled over, but I was pleasantly surprised. Right. Because nobody was expecting that, you know? Yeah, You're like, that worked. Wow. Okay. Hold it off. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. I wasn't like, oh, I just jizzed in my pants, but like, I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. So, like you, right. You, but you're right. They can't, they're trying to blow their load every movie. You can't do that. You got to work your way up to yeah. this and just make it good enough to be, you know, something people remember. And it's a good story. Uh, also in June, the Mummy Transformers Five. But who? Let's face it. Who gives a fuck? Maybe no the one gives a fuck about know. those movies. They're, they're, no. They're, they're, no one's gonna care. I mean, <laughs> if if the Mummy is good, yeah. I mean, look, this is the one thing about the Mummy is that Tom Cruise is involved, and Tom yes. Cruise yes. is a guy you can bet on because he's a fucking psychopath. So he's going to even if the if the Mummy content is is deplorable at the movie probably will work on some level. I mean, he's a franchise man. He's holding up the Mission Impossible franchise. He's I have had- a feeling that it's going to be a crash and burn, but like, <laughs> we'll see. I'll, we'll I'll see. say this: the, if the Mummy is good, it'll make me much more excited for this uh, Universal monster shared universe. Yeah, I, yeah, I have like a tinge of excitement for the Mummy. Transformers could fuck off. I don't care about Transformers. No, they, uh, They've already fucking really exhausted their welcome. Yeah. Like Michael Bay, anything that he touches, Ninja Turtles, anything, it's just bad. It, it still makes enough money for the fucking weird studio, because, though. Yeah, it makes a ton of money, but Michael Bay is like almost at this point just a joke. Like anyone that yeah, likes movies, here's Michael Bay and goes, yeah, not seeing that. He is the butt of the jokes. He's like a parody of himself. Like he's not even a real person. Like you watch the movies and go, Okay, things are exploding. Yeah, fuck, things are getting fucked up. But like, I'm shiny. not really. Inv- I don't remember this tomorrow. I right. won't even be able to tell you what happened. Yep, I can't tell where these robots' faces are. Who like, designed this shit? Listen, like, just, just let's talk about Pacific Rim real quick. Like that movie. Oh, I was- missed that one. Is that coming out next year? Yeah. No, well, Pacific Rim is Two. not coming out for a while. But sorry, um, say as a movie, I can remember. Yeah. I remember everything that happened in that movie, and you're talking about. Transformers, big giant robots doing shit and Pacific Rim, big giant robots doing shit. Yeah. You know, you remember the fights. You remember what happens. You remember what goes down and, and, and the weight to the, to the, 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 the stakes that are, that are happening, the things that are unfolding. In Michael Bay's movies, you don't remember anything at all. It's just one big mess and you can't make anything out. So if you want to see robots done right, watch Pacific Rim. That's all I'm saying. Well put, sir. Uh, let's move on to July 7th, people. Why is that date important? Because Geek-Moner. it's the day Spider-Man Homecoming is released, uh, the second movie of the year for the MCU. And uh, boy, does this movie have a lot riding on it uh, in the sense that it is 
the characters return home from uh, Sony, kind of, in a way, the partnership with Sony and Marvel, and uh, they keep rebooting Spider-Man, and he keeps getting younger and younger, where he'll probably be like a baby in the next reboot, he'll just be baby Spider-Man, and uh, yeah. teenage Aunt May, but such is uh, the media and life, where you just, uh, you get younger and younger. Of course, the listener, if this is your first show, you gotta, you gotta know I'm super, Geek-wooner. super psyched for this, but I'm still a little... Um, uh, what's the word? Cautious? I don't know. A little cautious. Yeah. Uh, based on a trailer that did not completely blow me away. But uh, what? What? Where are your guys' uh, excitement levels for the Homecoming and for all the three movies from Marvel coming out this year? I would say this one is obviously, or not obviously. This is my second most excited okay, for the, gotcha. out of the three Marvels. So I obviously know which one's first. I'm excited because this is Marvel's shot to. Uh, Show us if uh, Spider Man can be done right, and I and I think it's going to be a good movie. I've liked everything I've seen, so yeah, that's what that's what uh, you you might be like uh, close to the audience for this movie, but uh, you keep denying that. Anyways, Rux, <laughs> <laughs> yes. we are not the audience for this movie, but no. still, you uh, are you looking forward to this at all with any kind of uh, uh, excitement? Well, look, just in case anybody doesn't know, listen to it first time. If you're listening to us for the first time, I am a huge. Huge Spider-Man fan. Okay, I grew up with Spider-Man my whole life, and I liked the movies. I liked uh, Sam Raimi's movies. I liked the second one a lot, and I even liked uh, the the new Amazing Spider-Man, the first movie. I thought it was pretty okay, and I even liked parts of the second Amazing Spider-Man too. Uh, there, there there was some big blunders, but there was a an essence there that was cool. Okay, that I liked. Yep. yep. Um. So with all that. You got a lot to measure up to, okay? The thing about both of those movies, uh, both of those uh, different, um, what do you what do you call it? Different kind incarnations of, yes, of yes. them. Um, they they both deviated from what is canon. All right, in Raimi's movie, they gave them the organic web shooters and they changed things around, and then and then in in the amazing spider-man they went more with the the Gwen Stacy and the regular web shooters but then they did weird things with his his origin and that type of shit so both of those things have a kind of like unforgivable aspects that really it's not the real spider-man yes so now you have this movie and then i feel like this one changes even more shit <laughs> and both of those movies combined so i'm kind of like already hating this movie and the only thing that will will make me like it is probably Michael Keaton and the Vulture. Yeah. And even though that's like a huge departure from the Vulture from the comics, but the Vulture from the comics is kind of like not impressive at all. So it might maybe it's a step up or in the right direction. So you're improving something that's kind of like like uh you know, like like derpy. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find the word for it, but like, you know, it's something that's kind of lame. You're making it cool. Okay. The vulture's cool. So that, that's the only sh- shred of, of something that, uh, that I think is going to be impressive in that movie. I don't, I am not really into the young Spider-Man, the high school Spider-Man. Um, I'm not really into this John Hughes thing that they're trying to do. This is their uh, that really genre into, of movie. They want to deliver. I'm not really into the whole, um, you know, Tony Stark giving him all the tech and his suit is like robotic and shit. And OK, like- let's talk about that for a second, because I put a link to a tweet in here. It's something that the movie put out. It's kind of neat, but it's also kind of ridiculous in a way. Basically, it's like this little uh, video that is explaining uh, his suit and there's like little pull out things. So it starts. It's from and it C- says, it's like a play on the, the CES uh, thing. And yes, the CES presentations, which is the Consumer Electronics Show 2016. So it starts out saying designed by Tony Stark for Peter Parker, you know, and it shows clips. It zooms in and out. So it's got some cool stuff. Uh, upgraded web shooter, selectable web types which is something lar- laser targeting system on the web shooters, which I don't know why you need that. You're fucking Spider-Man. You should be able to aim properly. Web wings is a thing. It's a feature. Uh, oh, so far, everything I get GPS tracking system, holographic wrist display. So far, everything is like these, these pieces of tech. And then the last one is the one that kills me. It zooms in on his mask and it says eyes are expressive. What the fuck is that? What is the point of expressive eyes? Like, 
Why is it just so? Did he think people didn't know what he was emoting, and that was a really a big concern? Be like, no one's gonna know if this kid is frowning or not. I'm gonna make his eyes expressive. I don't know why they did that. This silly. No, well, because but, don't but they, they explain it? Yeah, they explained yes. it in Civil War that when his when he has the mask off, his his uh, vision is all over the place. Yes, it should have been like uh, uh, you know vision enhancing goggles, but it's like eyes are expressive. Like uh, we get it. He's a fucking. He's yeah. squinting. What the there's, fuck? There's the whole thing. He doesn't punch people. It's going to be a – so, look, I agree with you in the sense that those first two incarnations, as a huge Spider-Man fan, they didn't quite nail it. Now, if you kind of shove those together and mash them up, it gets closer. So my hope was this – is this going to be the time they nail it? Is this the one? What I think they do nail is bringing it closer to the ultimate Spider-Man universe, which is a popular – Still not Spider-Man. Still it's not. still – it is an alternate version of the main canon Spider-Man, correct? It's the version where he's always in high school and he's always a youth and – uh so, but if the, you know what they said, they're going to deliver. They're they're hitting on their promises, and that this is your high school teen movie that just happens to have Spider Man in it and uh, Iron Man. Uh, so I'm sure get, people are going to love it. I'm sure that the little kids are going to love it. I'm sure the one, high school kids are going to yeah, love it. But yeah. I don't know. Like Flash Thompson should be a guy that beats Peter up. That's I'm sorry. I don't care what color he is or. Who well, now he's a, now he's a cyber bully. Yeah, that's, that's lame. Is. No, that <laughs> still sucks. And he's played by a, 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 break. a Guatemalan dude named yeah. Tony Revolori. Yeah. So it's directed by John Watts. Of course, you got Tom Holland as Spider-Man. You're also going to see your Robert Downey Jr., Marissa Tomei as Aunt May, John Favreau returning as Happy Hogan, Donald Glover who's having a crazy year, and he's going to have a crazy year next year, Logan Marshall Green is playing a villain, Michael Keaton who's playing Adrian Toomes slash the Vulture, and Guri Rice as Betty Brant, Martin Starr, from uh, Silicon Valley, and of course Zendaya, who is still listed as Michelle, Hannibal Burris as a high school coach, Laura Harrier, Liz Allen, Tony Revolori, Flash Thompson, very diverse, hip, now looking cast in a uh, New York uh, high school stuff. Yeah, Boy. I'm both nervous and excited. People this are going to uh, love this movie. I yeah. don't. I think Anthony is going to love this movie. Yeah, Rug Boy not going to like this movie. <laughs> I mean, Rug Boy might enjoy. The movie, but then when he looks upon it and he's going to always have this acknowledgement oh. that it's not really it's, it's it's like a very big departure Lame. from what we, we know as Spider-Man. It's it's a new it's 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 half baked. I, that's the thing is, I think for Spider-Man in name only, if you want to get serious, it's going to be, you know, for really our, us really longtime Spider-Man fans, it's going to be a hard Spider-Man to swallow, but I'm willing to swallow it whole. Yeah. I swallow. Yes, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Uh, okay, so here's what's interesting with movie release schedules is when you start to cram in all these movies, and and every year there's more and more tentpole films. Sometimes you have a week to have the box office to yourself before another movie comes in. Like our next uh, movie coming in seven days later. So Spider-Man: Homecoming, July seventh, July fourteenth, War for the Planet of the Apes. Which is a, a quietly amazing franchise. Another one I know Anthony is excited for. Uh, this one directed by Matt Reeves, uh, starring Andy Serkis, smokehapped as Caesar, Judy Greer, Woody Harrelson. If you've seen the trailer, looking badass as a general. Steve Zahn, a couple other people. Anthony, how hyped are you for this movie? I'm going to throw the Apes franchise in there with Alien Predator and like Godzilla yep. as my undercover yep. uh, low-key uh, fanboy shit. But I totally get that. It's all kind of like very the same thing, you know? Like, I get it. If you like this, you're going to like this. Yeah, I guess. Um, this movie's going to be... I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah. I forgot that I... I mean, it, It's weird because I forget that these movies happen. But right. I, But every, every when I think back to it, I'm like, God, those movies are fucking awesome. Like, they are. Uh, the first Planet of the Apes like from the reboot, I forgot what it's called, Rise. Really good. Then uh, the last one, uh, was it Rise? Or I don't forget what the fuck it was called. What what was the the second one called? Is um I don't know. Uh, we went over this before. Yeah. It was uh, what year did that come out? Two thousand something. Yeah, what are the names of the movie so we get this right? Okay, they're, they're, they're they're named horribly. That's the that's the point that that sucks. They're named horribly. Which it's hard to remember what the names of these movies are. Dawn. Dawn. Uh, Dawn, Dawn was. Dawn. Fucking awesome, dude. Dawn. The first one is Rise. The second one is Dawn. Rise which, was a pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise. Yeah. Rhyme yeah. not intended. But 
I was like, whoa, this is good. Like the part where Caesar says no is fucking amazing. And that's the part that's yes. been built up forever in the Planet A's franchise. And then yeah. Rise or Dawn was Dawn, the second one. The, the next fucking level. second yeah. one is yeah. fant- a fantastic one of the best movies I'd seen in a long time. So it's kind of like uh, like Walking Dead, where you the why I think why Rise worked is you know the you know we wanted Fear the Walking Dead to kind of show us the world before leading up to it, and you know it didn't really show you the greater world; it just showed you these bunch of assholes and what happened. But Rise was like this showed you how this shit started, how Caesar became smart, and how everything, and it all started at the end with him just saying no. Like they took their time to set that up, and it was definitely worth the the fucking wait. And the, the pacing. Well, I think it's that, but I also think the fact that just Caesar's character is is fucking amazing. And and if you've watched I, the seventies films, yeah, they were talking about how the Caesar was a prophet, basically, and how he was the ah. the man. And like you yeah. never really got to see that in those seventies films. You only got to see his parents. You got to see Caesar towards the back half, but they've made Caesar of he's basically Jesus, dude. He's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I hope. I mean, and, I, and the I way wonder... they, they the mocap, I mean, is yes. like, unbelievable. So th- this movie, it's weird because I forget that this franchise even exists until there's a yeah. trailer for it. So yep. like, it's not always on my mind, but when I when I hear about it, I'm like, oh yeah, that that shit's gonna be fucking. Awesome. I mean, I do love that it's under the radar ish that way because uh, it's uh, it just feel like it's special and you can enjoy it and it's not gonna get spoiled by everything, by making it huge and over marketing it or whatever. It's very um, like. Opera, almost like almost like a uh, like Greek movements, tragedy. Yes, yes. Move the movements, the 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 uh, arc of this character. Like he should get a fucking Oscar nomination for playing this fucking and like just whoa a, a mo. I'm just saying a mocap character being so compelling and having such a great story over three movies is uh that's great. I Hard do think do. that these are well done and they and and they hold up pretty well and I enjoyed the first two of them and I. I'm cautiously, damn it. cautiously, cautiously, cautiously optimistic. Right take, on. Take cautiously out. Take. <laughs> You're not going to, but I know. Uh, all right, let's jump ahead to November 3rd, which by process of elimination is the MCU movie Anthony is the most excited for. And that is Thor Ragnarok. Uh, coming out, uh, what did I say? November 3rd, directed by Taika Waititi. Uh, with Kate Blanchett, Benedict Cumberpatch uh, as Strange in the cast here. Idris Alba, Chris Hemsworth, Anthony Hopkins, Tessa Thompson, Tom Hiddleston, Carl Urban joining the cast. Jamie Alexander as Sif. It's funny. They put Stan Lee in all of these you movies. You mentioned Mark Ruffalo. His name. Mark Ruffalo is the next one. Also, Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum. No, this is not the first Jurassic Park. Uh, Ray Stevenson as Volstagg and rumored... This Lou Ferrigno, oh, they still say he does the voice of the Hulk. He does. Just, he's still the voice of the Hulk. But, Anthony, why why are you excited for this movie the most? Before you go, though, they have a synops- official, official synopsis. Okay. Which I'll read real quick. Because we kind of know this, but this is now official what, uh, what they put out in Marvel Studios. Thor Ragnarok. Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe without his mighty hammer. And finds himself in a race against time to get back to Asgard to stop Ragnarok, the destruction of his homeworld, and the end of Asgardian civilization at the hands of an all-powerful new threat, the Ruthless Hela. But first, he must survive a deadly gladiatorial contest that pits him against his former ally and fellow Avenger, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, That sounds fucking awesome. We saw that concept already. He had two swords. I'm, I'm excited to see him with two swords. Anthony, why is this number one out of the three for you? Uh, number one, because there's so much potential here for a, just a fucking rollicking good time. And, yeah. I mean, the cast is looking really good. Um, I'll say this. This is my number one, obviously. But this is also the one where I'm like, this could be a fucking mess. Because <laughs> they've got a lot going on here. I mean, that yeah. lot synopsis. Yeah. It seems like two different storylines merged into it one. It kind of does a little bit, with, two with parts. With the Ragnarok yeah. thing, but then they're going on Planet Hulk sort of deal. So they're merged into some shit here. Also, I haven't seen anything from Taika Waititi. And I know that these the past two four, Thor films, I wouldn't say they're complete garbage, but they're two of the weaker Marvel fo- movies in the whole sure. universe. So Thor hasn't had a awesome movie yet. So no. I can't it- count on this being awesome because... Thor hasn't had an awesome movie yet. They're taking a bunch of shit 
I mean, you've got a bunch of characters coming in this, and you've got a, another new director on this franchise. That is all good points. But that, all that all that makes it exciting too, because you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. See, it I could... cocked an eyebrow when you guys said Lou Ferrigno was doing the voice. Yeah. In the uh, in the World War Hulk comic, yeah, the Hulk talks a lot because oh. he's, like, he's like he's got like his intelligence at the at, on this planet. Whoa! So I remember a while ago there was uh, there was discussions of you know will he have some kind of a little more intelligence? I hope so because because he's in another universe, he's on another planet. Um, it sounds like it starts with the whole World War Hulk stuff. Rex, do you think this will be a mess or will this be the best Thor movie yet? I don't know. I mean, uh, I like the Hulk. I like the Hulk fighting Thor. That's always fun to watch. Um. I like Planet Hulk and World War Hulk and that whole, uh, you know, Hulk kicking ass and kind of being sentient and, and knowing what he's doing and kind of having control over himself. Uh, we've not seen that yet. And that would be I would love, cool, yeah. I would love to, to see that. We've seen yeah. Hulk smash, but we've never seen Hulk as a thinking being. Yes. I would love to see that. Uh, the, I mean, you know, Anthony, now that you said all that shit, it does make me nervous because we saw – those set pictures of like uh, them looking for Odin. We know he goes to visit Doctor Strange. Like I would, it would be great if there's a shot of Thor and Hulk and Strange all fighting Hela. You know, sounds amazing. But uh, Taika Waititi, uh, we watched that behind the scenes video of him taking us around the set. Seems like a fun guy. Um, I, I I agree. I don't really know his his style per se. It, I know it's kind of fun. Uh, he's talked about why the the logo looks like an 80s logo because he was inspired by 80s, 90s sci-fi movies, which I love. But, yeah, it could still be a mess, I suppose, with all this going on. I mean, on. if it's like Conan the Barbarian, I'm yeah, um, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I <laughs> love fucking thing. Conan the Barbarian. Conan, the first one is good, yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm super I'm super excited for this Thor because you this kid has the possibility to be the best Thor. <laughs> Thor movie, and if he's starting that, like, he's unworthy, and he lost his hammer, that's kind of interesting. Okay, then, uh, people, we got two more to round out the year, and it's two big ones, still in November, November 17th, we finally get the Justice League, Geek Boner. Uh, which would be entry number five into the shared universe, this one is directed by the Zack fucking Snyders, um, and uh, uh, also, you know, you got, the, the whole cast is back. Uh, being Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller as The Flash, Henry Cavill is back as Superman, Amber Heard joining as Mira, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, Jeremy Irons returns as Alfred Pettyworth, uh, Diane Lane, Amy Adams, Connie Nielsen from Wonder Woman, Queen Hippolyta also in this, J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon, uh, Kirstie Clemens as an Iris West, Jesse Eisenberg confirmed to be returning, Lex Luthor, we talked about Sierra and Hins as Steppenwolf, Willem Dafoe as Volko, who's an Atlantean. Now, talk about an, another movie that has a lot writing, that has a lot going on. The story of Batman and Wonder Woman assembling a team of metahumans to fight Steppenwolf, whatever the fuck, parademons. Oh, boy. Uh, is I'm excited for this, but in a weird way. It's almost kind of the same thing. I'm looking forward to watching a train wreck. Is anybody else getting that feeling yet? Or are you still have positive hopes for this? I think that... Okay, so we I think they got the message. Make the movies more fun. Okay, they got the message. Now, Zack Snyder um, makes me worry because Zack Snyder, I, I feel like, just like Ronda Rousey, he lost his mojo. All right? Yeah, maybe. Got, I, that that loss KO. shook him. Yes. He got shaken up. So I feel like he's lost his mojo, and he's this is his uh, his big fight. To come back with new against Nunez. Yeah, this is his. You know how where he got rocked. You know, you guys know the Razzies, right? The Razzies, oh, yeah. which is the yeah. worst. They just put out their thing. Uh, BVS nominated for eight out of ten oh, of yeah. the categories. Almost a clean sweep of all the categories. Seriously? Yeah, wow. I believe something like that. So yeah, it's that is that is a, a devastating knockout punch right there. I'll tell you what. Okay, so he's gonna change his game plan just like Rousey did. He's and, fucking and, better, and he's gonna stand up and start swinging instead of doing what he does best. I don't know that this is this is the shaky ground here. We it, it is now. The only thing that will probably happen, I mean, best case scenario is that it's entertaining, and we we like this is what 
He softened us up now. Yes, that's all I'm expecting. That's all right. I want is just he's, I want to have a good the time. He's going to suck. But now is it going to suck so bad that like like BBS is he yeah. going to go to that depth or is he just going to like suck enough where we're like, ah, it wasn't as bad as BBS and well, it was fine. And we'll, we'll be happy with that. Well, we've seen there's more jokes in it. You got Ezra Miller lightning things up as the Flash. You got Batman wearing some weird armor now. It looks like he, Arkham Knight for some yeah, reason. Yeah, Arkham Knight meets Night Owl from The Watchmen. Uh, so, uh, hey, Anthony, excitement level for this one. At the end of the day, it's still going to be the Justice League on screen. So, and, yes. and we're, I'm no big fan of superheroes. So, I am excited. That being said, it's fucking Zack Snyder doing this. <laughs> so, like, I'm angry, excited. Like, I'm, I want to be more excited, but I can't Why help. Why are you putting people through this? But I can't shake that fucking stench of DC. <laughs> and this is even worse than Wonder Woman because this is the asshole that's made two shitty films in this yes. fucking universe. It's not, at least Wonder Woman has Patty Jenkins, who isn't involved as much. Whereas right. this guy has had a direct hand in... 0 for 2! He's 0 for 2! Yeah, he's had a direct hand in feeding you absolute syphilis. So, yeah. like, what, What you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I am pumped. I am, I am Will excited. Will you repeat again for me what you said last week about if you like Batman versus Superman, you are probably a... Child predator. <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, it's, 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 That's the best observation I've ever... You, you probably uh, enjoy <laughs> dining in feces, like I said last week. Martha! <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I can't see, me. like, I'm going to, you, you've got me all fired up again. I can't see how yeah, you can like this it, movie and it. say this movie is fuck, Batman versus Superman is good when it gets nominated for eight out of ten Razzies. Like, the Razzies right. are, that, that means your movie is a joke, dude. Absolutely. So this, and this guy's doing this film. So it's, it's weird because I'm excited, but I'm pissed. I'm excited because we're getting the Justice League on screen. And that's like, that's, ta- that, that, that should be a monumental thing. This is the fucking least, Justice League, yeah. dude. This is, so, this, is, this, is, this is bigger than the Avengers. The Justice League was the original, yes. the OGs. Absolutely. And now we got this fucking asshole doing it. So look, what half of what could save this is you don't have your fucking David S. Goyer writing fucking horse shit. You got Chris Terrio, but based on a story by Zack Snyder. But he's his story. He's a good story guy. Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It helps that it's not David S. Goyer. Also, we uh, just released today. It was a, a, a new photo. Well, last week, we talked about uh, a photo with three of them. It had Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash. Now we got a new high-res photo with five of them. Still not the whole Justice League, because there should be seven. Uh, but you have a shot of, from left to right, Batman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg in the middle, the Flash, and Aquaman. And it looks like the Flying Fox. It looks like there's a, they're in a ship and the door's opening. And, of course, there's fog like in every Zack Snyder movie. Uh, this uh, is an interesting picture. It's cool to see them, but something seems off about this. Uh, does anybody else get a yeah. feeling that something seems weird? That fog doesn't look right. Fog. The fog is weird. Now, we know also, that is Cyborg. To be yeah. a, is it supposed to be like from set? Because I don't for know. me, it looks like a terrible Photoshop. And what gives it do that feeling? Well, mostly cyborg, but everybody like everybody doesn't look like naturally in that photo. So if you look at and the placement of people is kind of interesting. Like so, we know cyborg never has a costume. So anytime you see him anywhere, it's a complete you know CGI rendering. It's not an actual person. Maybe aside from his head, they mo kept it. But it's uh so like first of all, Batman has this weird armor and he's got the night owl goggles. Then you got Wonder Woman standing next to him and she looks like fake. She looks too, I don't know what it is about her. And then, of course, the cyborg. But then Flash is, he's behind Wonder Woman. Flash is next to Cyborg. And then Momoa's arms holding the spear is in front of Flash. Something just seems off with their sizes and their placement. I don't know. I still don't like his suit, the Flash. Uh, but we're slowly, we should be getting a fucking another trailer for this. Hey, Aaron, now, now. now I'm looking at it again. Yeah. Give me one second here. Now that I'm looking at it again. Yeah. Um. I'll tell you why. Cyborg is completely CGI. We know that. But like you said, Wonder Woman looks like a doll. Right. She looks like a doll. And you've got four out of the five characters looking straight ahead. And then you've got Flash looking somewhere else. else. Like as if they (laughs) they took his photo from another set photo and then placed it in this. So Yeah, sometimes that's a tell. He's looking the other way. He's not even looking at the fucking camera. So... I don't know why they chose this photo. If it is a real photo, then it's a terrible real photo. Or and if it's not, well, look at the light not. source though. Look at yeah. the light source. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. There's something weird about it. If 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 there's lights coming up from above them that are that are equal, 
then Batman's got the right lighting. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. He's got the heavy shadows just coming straight down. Yes. Wonder Woman, they've managed to kind of fake it a little bit. Yeah. But she then had Flash to be- and Aquaman don't get any of those same shadows at all. They're, they're completely in darkness. Right. So it doesn't make any sense. Something is all this stuff always looks well, off. Why, I know why would they release this photo? Green screens. I don't know. This photo sucks. It's an official. Yeah. <laughs> it's a. Uh, and where's Superman? There's supposed to be seven of the fucking well, motherfuckers. Superman's the, the, the terrible secret. I mean, he's dead from the move, prior movie. But the mullety, he's, he's going to be the mullety black suit douchebag Superman. Oh, boy. Wow. Uh, it's just a yeah, very questionable know. photo to put out as, as your it's weird. piece. It certainly is. November 17th, we will find out. If it's hot mess or not, I, I want it to be good because, like you said, it is. It's bigger than the Avengers. It's the fucking Justice League. Uh, this should have been done uh, properly. Okay, so at the end, finally, rounding out the year again, the month that Disney owns every year <laughs> for the past couple of years is December 15th, Star Wars Episode Eight, continuing the story of Ray and Finn, directed by Rian Johnson this time, also written by well, the screenplay by him. Uh, Carrie Fisher's last Star Wars movie, uh, you know, as a, you recently know she passed away, but she had finished. She had wrapped on episode eight. Apparently she plays a bigger role. Her daughter is Billy Lord, who's also in the movie, who is second listed in the cast, which is interesting. Uh, and then you got, you know, your Daisy Ridley, Mark Hamill, Adam Driver, uh, Oscar Isaac, Peter Mayhew playing Chewbacca, Gareth Edwards in the movie. I think these guys do like cameos in each other's movies. Uh, Warwick Davis, Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Daniel, C-3PO, Andy Serkis again. Anthony Serkis is in every fucking thing, but you never see his face. I feel bad for this guy's career. You never know it's Have him. Have you seen his face? Yeah, maybe you don't yeah, want to see, see his face. He face. looks kind of like, he looks like a mocap CGI character. Like, he looks like, like Gollum. <laughs> he what? Looks like Mr. Bean. He looks like Mr. Bean, but you could see how where they pulled Gollum's characterizations yeah. like, right off of his face. Uh, I mean, uh, I should talk, but whatever. <laughs> we're all uh, Anthony, I know you're not. You're the casual Star Wars fan. We'll get to you later. I'm going to ask Ruggs first. Uh, are you excited for episode eight at all? You you want to find out what happens after Force Awakens ends? Well, yeah, you got the you left off with uh, Ray going to Luke Skywalker. Yes. And, and you're you see like, OK, him. you're going to see Luke, Luke. And you're going to see what happens with uh, fucking emo Whatever Darth Vader guy, whatever his name is, what is he? Uh, uh, Kylo Ren. <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yeah, yes. you're gonna see what he what he does. You're gonna find out who the bad guy, who Snoke is, and Morrissey what- Vader. Just call him Morrissey Vader. Yes, <laughs> emo Vader. Yeah, whatever. He's a millennial Vader. <laughs> He's a millennial fucking Vader. Yeah, yeah bastards. He, he can't deal. Yeah, he needs he needs a safe space. Um, I'm I'm interested to see what happens because um. You know, we haven't seen Luke Skywalker. We've seen, yeah. like, three of the fucking prequels, and there's no Skywalker. We had to sit through that shitty Anakin shit. And um, now we're going to get to see what happens to the Jedi after the Return of the Jedi. And we're probably going to get some uh, flashbacks and shit. It's going to be cool. That would be awesome. I do want them. I would like a nice conclusion. I feel like 8 and 9 should really kind of conclude the Skywalker storyline because I think... The Rogue One proved that, like, you, the spinoffs are a lot of fun, and I would be okay with them just wrapping up the Skywalkers. You gave them fucking nine movies. Let's move on to something else. Do they always need to be trilogies with the Star Wars? I think they got to wrap up the Skywalker shit. Absolutely. And I think that um, this is a good way to do it and maybe forge ahead and kind of create new things for Star Wars. Because this can go on for another 30, 40 years with new fucking legacy shit. Uh, Anthony, do you care at all about the episode eight? I mean, if it didn't happen, I wouldn't care. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, like Rugboy said, it ended on a a cliffhanger that even I recognized. Oh shit, he met fucking Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is going to be in the next film. Cool, let's see that. And that, you know, yeah, and like my only cri- criticism of the movie is like it just it was setting up the franchise again for a new generation with shit I'd seen and I. Where the movie ended is where I wanted it to start. I was like, no, show me this. I didn't care about any of that. You got to this part, and uh, so great cliffhanger. No more Death Stars. We're done with Death Stars. Please, no more planets that shoot other planets. It's not necessary. So was the Death Star in Force Awakens supposed to be like a bigger Death Star than before? It was, yeah, it was, I think it was like a more, it was like an actual planet, Whoa. like uh, where like uh, people, it was terraformed. 
And uh, I think it was a lot bigger. That, I, that was the impression yeah. I got. You, you might be right that it was an actual planet this time. Because it blew up like five planets at once, like real easily at one point. It was just like pew, 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 and then just destroyed everything. Uh, but good stuff. Look, I want to end this segment with just taking a look. At, we're talking about Star Wars at where uh, what, how much fucking money and how many movies Disney has in the top 10 uh, for 2016 domestic and worldwide growth. So Rogue One coming out as late as it did ends up being number two highest domestic grossing movie for 2016. Oh, shit. Unbelievable. Uh, the top 10 domestic goes Finding Dory, Rogue One, Captain America Civil War, Secret Life of Pets, The Jungle Book, Deadpool, Zootopia, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Suicide Squad number 10, Doctor Strange, uh, Suicide Squad 9, Doctor Strange at number 10, leaving one, two, three, four, five, six out of the top 10, Disney. <laughs> Just fucking dominating. So Finding Dory, 486 million final gross domestic. Now, worldwide, the same story for Disney, if not better. Just things are shift. Captain America Civil War comes in $1.15 billion. 2016 worldwide gross. Oh, number one. Finding Dory made him another billion dollars. Zootopia made them another billion dollars. Then you got Jungle Book, Rogue One, Secret Life of Pets, Batman v Superman, Fantastic Beasts, Where to Find Them. That's a new one for Worldwide. Deadpool, Suicide Squad. Doctor Strange does not make the top ten, but here you got one, two, three, four, five out of the top ten. Highest grossing worldwide belonging to Disney. Disney is un this unstoppable fucking yeah, juggernaut last year. Killing time. it. Holy crap. They have something for everyone. Like, it's so smart, this diversification that they took. I still think that, yes, they're dominating. And just because things make money doesn't mean that they're actually good. So, True. you know, they're, they're good in some way. They're high quality. But originality and kind of like the you can see the formulaicness of their movies a little too much. So... I don't know. They need to kind of check themselves a little bit. And that's all. Disney uh, artistically. R R Disney uh, commanded twenty six point four percent of the North American market last year. Like a quarter of all movie monies went to Disney last Disney, year. Disney, bitch. Damn, dude, yeah. you can't fuck with the Disney. All right, that wraps it up for uh, superhero movies coming in. 2017, lots of well, exciting super, stuff. It's more like a sci-fi superhero. Yeah, sci-fi superhero geek fantasy yeah. uh, geeky uh, shit. franchise. Geeky shit. Nerd shit. Now, I am uh, I think I mentioned in the beginning we were going to talk TV 2017, but listener, we're going to save that. We're going to save that and break it out of its own thing because that also there's some exciting things and it, it deserves its own time. Proper due. So it needs its proper, proper due. It's proper late due. Late for some and, of us here. This show is, uh, we got some feedback. Before we get to the feedback, though, I want to mention a couple things. First thing is we have a fan club. Uh, it's called Patreon. Visit jockadur.com slash Patreon. You can join our fan club. And for a low monthly pledge, you get access to like a private podcast feed where we post bonus audio, post shows, instant reactions, full episodes. Uh, I did a trailer reaction uh, for Spider-Man, which you can watch. Uh, also, the last thing I put up was uh, you can hear uh, Anthony's conquests uh, as a man <laughs> that uh, happened after G-Fest uh, 2016. I totally forgot that you uh, talked about that. Remember that? That is on the Patreon. Uh, you listen to our oh, G-Fest show. I don't think I've ever heard this. Uh, no, because you weren't on. We did it with John Bellotti at the end. Oh. Anthony just kind of spilled the beans, and it's all on the Patreon about what Shit, happened. I gotta join this now. What happened after the night of G Fest that wasn't in the show, but Damn. was in Anthony's pants? Oh, uh, so let's just carry on to some. Um, Continuing the theme of Filipinas. Filipinas all the way. Hashtag Filipinas. Uh, I got a little bit of feedback to share with you from our listeners for our listeners, and then we'll wrap it up. But before I even get to that listener, I have. A little piece of homework for you. If you listen to this point, if you are a faithful, loyal subscriber and you are listening now, I want you to do us a favor. If you if you don't mind, take a few seconds, visit jockanerd.com, click on the little button on the left, which is our speak pipe button. 
Here's why. We are approaching our 150th episode. Oh, shit. Uh, can you guys believe that? Talking nerd. Uh, Fuck balls. Right? That's crazy. Fuck. And uh, I don't know how that happened. I blinked. I passed out for 120 of them. Uh, I, but I, what I want is, listener, I would love for you to send us a little bit of audio that we could play throughout the 150th episode. Now, this could be anything. You can roast us. You can congratulate us. You can tell, tell us to go fuck ourselves. Uh, whatever you want. But then take a moment to plug your stuff. If you have a show, a podcast, a website, just quickly plug it. You got 90 seconds. Or if you want more time, you can record a voice memo on your phone. Email it to show at jockandnerd.com. And uh, we'll make a thing out of it. I'll get some other podcasters to send some audio. We've done the same for some other shows. We'll play it throughout the show. Now, listener, don't be a dick and make me look like an ass and not saying anything. All right? That's probably what's going to happen. Do not do that. That's probably what's going to happen. Remember the boy contest? Lame. Yeah, we had so many uh, entries for that. Uh, yeah. We had the, the... People don't like to send in shit for some reason. Lazy but, th- but this is a special occasion. It's a milestone. Yeah. Uh, look, if I get one, I will be happy. I won't be mad at you. All right, there we go. Uh, Jockandnerd.com. Click the button or email the show at Jock and Nerd. I got a couple of tweets and comments from all over the place I want to share with you guys. We're going to start with Jimmy Gravin, who is at 80 Sports Editor on Twitter. He tweets, downloaded and ready to listen en route to Hawaii. You guys are awesome. Geek Mooner. They're taking us to Hawaii, guys. You're awesome for listening. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, he's I'll awesome. Vouch for him. I, on my trip to the from the Philippines back home, I listen to some Jock and Nerd. It helps kill some fucking time, let me tell you. There you go. The best thing to do on a plane, listener, if you're going to take a long ride, download a bunch of old shows, new shows, and we'll keep you laughing. I believe Malofsky also took us on vacation, and he was like, I'm on the beach listening to Jock I don't know if it kept me laughing. I just was, like, puzzled the entire time. Like, I had a confused <laughs> fa- like, face the entire time. Why am I not on this show? This is my show. It What's was either that or just me, like, or like me, like that meme where the, the little African-American kid's like, hmm, tell me more. Like tell me more. Yeah. Or the that's the Gene Wilder one, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one, too. Mm, tell yeah. me more. Yeah. <laughs> Just, also, and, then, and, people yeah. Are, and then the flight attendants are walking by like, what the fuck is he listening to? Why? What is that weird look on his yeah. face? Why does he look constipated? <laughs> that's just how he looks. Yeah, that's just how he looks. <laughs> that's my resting bitch face. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay, the next thing, David Zika, our buddy David Zika. He, a few uh, months ago, he had posted on our uh, community page, Jock and Nerd group page on Facebook, where you can find at jockandnerd.com slash community. He's like, I want a recommendation for one of these crates, these boxes, these geek things, like a loot crate or a, uh, another one. He ended up going with Geek Fuel, and he has posted an unboxing video with him and his son uh, getting the Geek Fuel box. And uh, first of all, it was just really cool to see the David Zika and hear him after all our uh, relationship through the show. Uh, David, thanks for sharing that. And he, he gives it a good recommendation. It was only 15 bucks. There's a link in that video to get one. And uh, he rec- he's like, he'd order again. And they got some good shit. They got T-shirts and comic books. And I was just fine. I was like, oh, that's David Zika. He's, that's the Zika. David Zika is <laughs> like that like lady you hit on for the first time. That right. like, just throws a drink in your face, like right away. And just ah, tells you ah. you suck. But then we just you just keep, you know, persist- showing persistence, nagging. And finally that bitch comes around. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> she gets yeah. 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 yeah, 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 Warms up. He's like, ah, ah, ah now, ah, now he's, ah, just, right. he's just doing us. Uh, he's just, yeah. uh, he's like, you know what? It's a uh, good some, like, it's some it's good a side. Boobs. We're basically <laughs> his booty call now. We're his side piece. We are his podcast side piece. Oh, oh, we have taken this real far. <laughs> <laughs> Great <laughs> that's analogy. <me>. That's <laughs> here's here's someone who also took a, put some more connections together. Raymond Swanson, listener on our Facebook page, writes this. Just listen to episode 146, and I have to say, I think John Bellotti Jr. might be Dante from Clerks. Maybe next time he's on, he could say, I'm not even supposed to be here today to verify smiley wink face. And I, I, once he wrote that, I was like, that he fucking sounds like Dante. Yes, absolutely. He does. He's totally Dante from Clerks. It's great. You were a smart person, Raymond Swanson. We're no going to have. why you make the greatest TV dinners. Swanson TV. I like the extra family size one. Yeah. The Salisbury steak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a tweet from our buddy Cosmo Fox. Remember Cosmo? Yeah. Was that the guy that wore the fox face on Blab? He's the, yeah. uh, the furry uh, back on the Blab days. Part of our furry contingent that I, I believe we gained some subscribers that were furries. That at one point, I was on the screen with like three other furries. Uh, Cosmo was always great. He was always there every every week. Everyone was he, praising your, your furry mask. Yeah, there, I was like, no, no, no. That's just my head. Oh, yeah. 
Sorry, yeah. I'm a, but I'm a real life furry, people. Uh, they thought I had a mask on. They should on. make an Imran mask. They should make an, a giant Imran furry mask. Ooh, I'm going to have to think about that for uh, put that up there with the rug boy dildo. Uh, the, he that, tweets. <laughs> Where are now? That that's uh, it's in it's in <laughs> China. The mold, it's, I'm, I'm working on the mold in China. Keeps coming back too small. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> he tweets at Jock and Nerdcast at Bilotti John. Watched Suicide Squad last night. Finally underwhelmed. So then I watched Ghostbusters. Fuck it, I quit. Oh shit. That's about right. That's about right. I, yeah, I, you got it. I haven't seen Ghostbusters, but I kind of. I it was all right. It wasn't horrible. I had a chance to it? watch it on the plane and. In 28 hours of travel, I decided not to watch it. So. <laughs> so that's pretty bad. You're like, I couldn't find all these 28 hours. At no point did I feel like pressing play on the new Ghostbusters. Right. I would rather scratch my balls and smell my fingers. And that's <laughs> what he did for 14 and a half hours while he was listening to Jock and Yeah, like podcast. that German coach. That's German <laughs> soccer coach. <laughs> yeah, Wait, what happened? Oh, my God. He like, he, like, he like sticks his hand in his pants and scratches his balls and then like covertly sniffs, sniffs his fingers. But he doesn't realize that the camera's on him the entire time. <laughs> oh my god, it's so great! Busted. It's something. Ah. It's something everybody has done. It's just they haven't been on the field getting filmed. <laughs> Get your hand off my penis! And then he says, "Yeah, he had his own hand on his penis. <laughs> he had his head somewhere." And then finally, a tweet which we I got an issue with this guy. We got to talk him off the ledge. Jack Hawkwood at Hawkwood Jack tweets at us and at Really Rug Boy to, uh, in response to our Rogue One show. No sooner have I unsubscribed, the allure of Rug Boy and Star Wars brings me back. First of all, sir, you said the U word. How dare you say the U word? Yeah, why would you unsubscribe? Like, there's not even a good reason for that. Like, like why would you go through the effort to like, actually click another button? Now? Just leave it there. We started sucking. Like, what happened? Like, what, what, we've been, we're better than ever. Uh, but I think it's okay. I think he was just, he was a little uh, just overly exaggerating because Rugboy then tweeted him, are you a Dan Slott fan? Which was, I thought, a great question. Yeah, that's the <laughs> only reason that I can f- figure somebody would like, all right, fuck this show. He hates Dan Slott and I love Dan oh, Slott. How dare you? <laughs> but he responded, had to Google Dan Slott. So no, you guys are great. Keep it up. He says, I'm a new tweeter in the UK. So a little out of pop culture. You guys, you are keeping me in the loop just about. So I don't know if he still listens or he didn't listen. Maybe but- he's not into like maybe he is into movies, but not into comics. When we kind of go into the comic area a little too much, come back, Jack Hawkwood. I'm going to talk. I'm going to say, Jack Hawkwood, why did you subscribe in the first place? This show sucks. <laughs> <pretty> cool, <laughs> See, listener, and if you want to say stuff like that that we can play in our 150th episode, just uh, send us a speak pipe. Visit jockader.com. You got a few weeks to get it in. Uh, for the 150, uh, as we wrap up, I want you guys to also check out the Trivia Geeks podcast. It's a fun show. I'm a co-host there. However, the latest show that posted is the one where I hosted the show, and it, was, it wasn't it was as bad as I remembered. It wasn't a complete disaster, uh, tell you the truth. Also, I'm going to put a link in the show notes at com slash 147 for the Trivia Geeks podcast. But also, if you want to come on the show... And you got a good mic, and you got a good setup, and you're a podcaster, or you have something you want to promote, uh, or you're a performer, uh, click on this link because they're looking for people. So, coming up soon, uh, Matt Delhauer uh, signed up to be on my team for Trivia Geeks Podcast. Geek Mooner. So, more Jock and Nerd is going to invade more Trivia Geeks. Cool. Fun, fun cross promotion. Rugs, you may need to come on again because your audio for that episode, he was on. It was great. But remember, we were dealing with a stand-up comic who I think he was at a, a comedy club and he literally he left during the show to do a set and came back. Yeah. I mean I'll do it again, but you know, I'm not really enthused fucking, that my episode sometimes, that I spent time on is not, not not good. Because of this fucking sometimes these young you know, these young stand up comics, they can be I trouble. Just, yeah, millennials. <laughs> fucking millennials. Fuck them all. Uh, uh and uh before we peace out, rugs. Where can the people find you? Where do you live? Listen, I want to get up to a thousand people following me. Let's get it done, people. All right. So I right now I'm at like barely at five hundred. So you need to go to your phone and you need to get your Twitter out, not your dick, your Twitter, <laughs> and you need to put really rug boy. All right, at really rug boy on Twitter and say hello 
and send me some picture of a girl's boobs. Wowie zowie. Then you whip well, your dick out. No, well, yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. That's something else. I'm working on something. Send that to Anthony. Uh, Anthony, why should they subscribe to the show? I don't know. I, I don't understand why anyone listens to this show. To Me be neither. We have scientists and actors and like Jack and a Hayward scenic. Being from England is like another guy that's like across the pond. A set designer. We got furries. We have, uh, I don't know. Let us look. Maybe you could do that, listener. Let us know why you're listening. We'll play it for our 150th episode. In the meantime, subscribe on iTunes because it really helps out. Visit jockandnerd.com slash review. And give us money on Patreon. Go to the fan club. Just go to jockandnerd.com. Yeah. Everything is there. Everything you need to know is there. And finally, we, we need some new equipment. We do. This, this mixer is the, starting to crap out. Mixer's crapping out. When whenever we have guests in studio, it's uh, I've got to like adjust the mixer all the you time. You have to like hold that one line into the headphone yeah. amp. So what? Like, manually. It in. I do I have it. We're gonna get some like Christmas Patreons. So, like some people will be like, hey, the spirit of Christmas. Here's the like. F- here's five bucks. Here's the thing, boy. listener. If Go that's get a, you know a new mic stand. Yeah, we can look. If you don't want the ongoing thing, and we get it, people sometimes don't like recurring payments. Go to jockandnerd.com. There is a PayPal donate button. Give us whatever you want. One time thing. We'll send you some shit. We'll give you access to some of the shit. I don't know, but depending on how much you donate, but. There's a, you could do a one-time thing, whatever, however you guys want to support us, let us know. We will make it happen because we love you, listener, and we need you to do one last thing, and that's just tell a friend. Turn someone on the show. If every one person turned one other person on, we would double and triple and quadruple, and life would be great, and the empire of stupidity would rule the world. Or maybe just, you know, a few thousand people. Or maybe a few thousand people. (laughs) We're here for world domination. We're here for now that Trump, uh, you know, can get into a job that you don't need uh, experience. I'm I think world. I think world domination is fucking uh, within our reach. He's just lowered the bar for all evil si- villains to like take over the world. Really, you realize that, right? Think about that. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Much. It's a lot easier. <laughs> we need. We need. How do we counteract this? Uh, I don't know. We just keep we doing it. Kill a, all the millennials. We. <laughs> We round them up. We round them oh, up and boy. kill them. Oh, we need to reprogram them. No, it's not the millennials that it's did not. It's, it's not. Stupid. It's not. It's the stupid people. I know. It's, it's actually the. It's actually the older generation. Yeah, it's, it's the people that people. raised us. Look, it's old stupid racist people. It's Darwin's uh, law, natural law selection. They'll fucking kill themselves off and weed weed everybody out. It's fine. Just gotta. We just gotta ride it out. That's all. For the next four to eight the years. Uninformed boy. I mean, like, look. <laughs> the thing is, it's like. The Twitter alone, the tweets alone make my tweets look smart. Dude, did you see Sh- what happened to Shikrelli? Uh Martin Shikrelli, the drug guy who raised prices, who was huge on Twitter, he finally got himself banned off Twitter. They suspended his account. Oh, shit. Because he said some shit to this teen Vogue writer and, like, photoshopped his face on top of her husband's in a photo of them. Like, they were cuddling. And uh, they suspended his shit. Mm. Which to which I say, good. Now suspend fucking Trump's account. Why can't you do that? Because he's gonna be the president. Because he's the yeah, president. He's gonna be the president Twitter. of the universe. If only he could use his powers for good instead he's of. He's the leader of the free world. Hey, listen. You never know what Trump. He might uh, institute some really cool stuff, like uh, you know, like something with Taco Tuesday uh, across the nation. Supermodels everywhere. I think he likes yes. women. So like. You know, not in a good way. He could have like supermodels doing all like the working class jobs. Yeah, that would be nice. You get make that get that done in the first hundred days. All right, enough of this horseshit, listener. Thanks for listening. This is the Jock and Nerd Podcast. We appreciate every second you spend with us in your ear holes that we are in your ear holes or something like that. Uh, my name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. And we'll catch you next time. Prepare for destruction. <laughs> Democracy manifest. Chuck and nerd. I love getting my political manifesto out.